Okay, the next question comes from Kristen. Is it Kristen Lattice or Lattice? I think it's Lattice. She asks, how many times is too many times for follow-up? And I'm guessing she means in the sales process. How many times is too many times to follow up during the sales process? Um, I had two. So that's the question, Kristen. The background you would want to put into the business description part, okay? Training you here. She says, I had two conversations in the DMs and one girl booked a call with me and the other is still making a decision. I've followed up four times with both and neither is answering the messages and I'm adding urgency saying I only have two spots available in July, but still nothing. I really want to work on these projects as they're my ideal clients and they want and both want big projects done. She her business description is selling on Facebook Messenger and getting them to book slash show up to their calls. Nope. I got to retrain you on how to use this, the question. Thanks, Kristen. You're, you're helping me with my processes. Thank you. Okay. Tom has talked about this. I have talked about this until our face is blue. See, my face is blue right there about the sales process. This is why it's so important for you as an entrepreneur to have a sales coach. Little answers like this, even though I'm going to answer it, are not going to be enough. Sales is like, do you think you will never have to increase your skills or learn about new things or sharpen your techniques when you're doing your copywriting for your clients? Or do you think now that you know copywriting, you will never have to learn it again? You'll never have to sharpen those skills and go back and maybe reread a book or re take a class or take some continuing education? Do you think you just mastered copywriting and now you've mastered it forever? Of course not. Same thing with sales. As a business owner and especially as a freelancer, which you are right now, and you're the only salesperson for your company, you not only have the added duties and pressure to be a great copywriter, but you also have to be a great salesperson in order to get the business to do your copywriting, right? My advice is get a sales coach to help you with this each month because it's going to get you more business, which is going to increase your revenues so that you can really start building out your agency so you can either be the business development person managing the copywriters and maybe being in, being involved at the high top level of the copywriting or you're going to hire a salesperson who's going to go get you business and then you're going to be able to be the master copywriter. Up to you on how you do that with your business depending on your personality, but this is why it's so important. I don't want to just tell you what to do and not teach you to fish. Okay? I'm going to help you eat right now and I'm going to give you some fish, but I want to teach you how to fish. As a solopreneur, we have to be great at what we do and then we have to sharpen our skills in the area of sales. So I'm glad that you asked this question. Now, I'm not a sales trainer, but I'm going to tell you what I think Tom Black would, would tell you and I'm going to have Tom Black answer this and I'm hoping that a couple people chime in on this. When we are selling, our number one job is to control the sales process. We want to continually be, con be doing things that are going to control the sales process. So if a client gives us an objection and says, I'm not going to make a decision today. I need to think about it. I want to try and ask as many probing questions to understand why they aren't making a decision today. And that comes with the ability to have trust, which is why building rapport and establishing trust is the first part of the sales process. Because if you and I were talking and you, I was trying to get you to buy something from me and you weren't you and I have enough of a relationship of trust developed that you're just going to tell me, Sean, I don't have the money. Sean, I just, this isn't that important right now. So I'm just, my answer is no, but I'm just being a pussy and not telling you no. But you would be honest with me. You would be straightforward with me. Well, when we first get to know somebody and they're still in the prospect stage and, the stage and they're not our best friend, they're not always going to be honest with us about why they're not making a decision. Because we want them to know we don't mind them telling us no. That's okay. We just want to move a prospect through the, buy the buying process to pop out at the bottom as a closed one or a closed lost. 
the worst thing to a salesperson is somebody that says, I'll get back to you, and then they go, they go astray and they start ghosting us, right? So we want to create a very open air of environment that tells, tells them, keep me posted. If you're going to say no, just say no. I don't want to keep bothering you, okay? So we want to control the, the buying process. So back to my objection. If somebody says, you know, I need to think about it, okay, we're going to ask as many questions as we can to figure out why they need to keep thinking about it and why they won't make a decision right now when we know that they want it and they're telling us that they want it. That's the worst thing, right? Someone tells us we want it. We know we want it. That's why I'm talking to you, but I won't make a decision. We want to find out why we're not make, what's what's preventing them from making the decision, yes or no. So if they still won't answer that, we say, okay, great. I'll tell you what. Take all the time you need. How about I follow up with you next Tuesday what time is good for you, two o'clock or four o'clock? When people commit to a time on a calendar, they're a little bit more holding themselves accountable that they're going to confirm that meeting. Usually, not always, but usually. So control the buying process. I'm gonna follow up with you next Tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m. On Monday, I shoot them an email or I send them a text message and say, hey, John, just wanna let you know I'm gonna give you a call tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Look forward to talking to you and seeing if we can move this forward. We wanna control the sales process. I don't think you can ever follow up with somebody too much, okay? It's the frequency of the amount of follow-up that might change. Tom has a theory that he talks about a lot, and I don't know if he talks about this in pro code sales, but he talks about the drip theory. He might call it something else, but every now and then, if they go kind of rogue and, and it become it goes back into prospect stage, it's no longer you know farther down the funnel, and I just put them back into my general thing. If I run across an article or uh, some sort of something that might intrigue them, like this person wants to know about dogs, I might find a dog article, or if I see a dog article, I might paste copy and paste that article and send it to John and say, "Hey, John." Hope all is well in your world. I saw this article about dogs. Really thought you would like it. Hope all is well in your world. Reach out if I can ever do anything for you. And I just drip content to them forever. Forever. That's what email lists are about. I drip it out forever. And the more personalized it is, the more better the relationship's going to be. So to answer your question, how many times is too many times? There's never too many times that you can follow up with somebody. You just want to stop. You want to stop when they tell you, take me off your list. Quit fucking, call, talk, quit fucking calling me, you stalker, right? When they, if they ever get rude and like, stop calling me, then you want to take them off your list. But if they're always nice and they're just ghosting you, never hurts to drip content with them. But at some point, you do have to make the decision, is this person going to be a yes or is this person going to be a no? All right, so I hope that helps you out. This is a very long video, but this, that, this is kind of just to reiterate that, A, I'm not a sales trainer. Tom could probably answer this in two minutes, but there's no easy process to mastering the art of sales. This is why it's very important that you have a sales coach. And let me put it to you this way, okay? If you, you know why you're probably so anxious about these two clients? Because you only have two clients that you're waiting for. If you were constantly prospecting and you had 100 people, 150 people, 80 people in your pipeline, and you are balancing all of those different prospects of different stage from initial consultation to the presentation to the dis you know discovery to the presentation to the handling objections to the follow-up. If you had hundreds of people in your pipeline, you wouldn't be worrying so much about two. So while you're waiting on the two, be out there actively prospecting for more business and then what will happen is people will just be like, hey, on my time frame, I'm ready to do business with you, Kristen. You'll be less worried about it. Okay? That's my food for thought. Long video. Sorry, but I hope this helps.